Oh, I was wondering what you were talking about. I was asking you right. I thought you were about to take the show already. I'm eating the lake with nine cups of cider combination. Okay, Zuck, the head of the Gemara. Yesterday, we learned about the following. Let me see if we can scrape our memory. We learned about. The different types of revias. We learned that there were 10 revias that are not under dispute. Five of them are white and five of them are red. So just to run through them very quickly, the five red ones are the revias yain of a nausea from the missionary shayna. There's the arba koisis, you have to drink revias. There's a aloha that if you drink wine, you cannot paskin, and there's a locha that if you drink wine, you're not allowed to go into the base of Mikdash. And there's a locha that a revius of dam is metama boyo like a regular mace. Then we had the five white revius. We had the, the revius of oil required with the chala, and we had two pshatim. Toshva said the challah is referring to some of the breads that are brought with the carbon toida, while the Rafara said it's referring to the breads of the minchas chavitin of the daily mincha of the kain dadol. The revius shemen of nazir is the revius that's brought with the breads that the nazir brings when he's discharging his naziris. Mitzayra is referring to the amount of water required to dip the azov into. Shenifsalu is if you have Tomei Mashkin and a person drinks a revius of it, there's Xerid Rabbonon that that person becomes Tomei. And then there's the minimum amount of water or liquids required for you to carry in order for you to be over an Isra of Shabbos. So those were the ones that we were referring to. The Gemara quoted some others that were under dispute. They're not in our official list, but they are also a Shirvius. Is a machloikis if you can have multiple people or we have two people wash with one revius. There's the aloha of a revius of water that's brought for the Mayim Hamarim for the soja to drink, according to Yehuda. And we also had the amount of water that you need to dilute Meir Aglaim with. And then we had the case of how much is the minimum size mitzvah you need to table small Caleb. So those were the different revius that we learned about yesterday. Then we learned that the Mishnah Rishonah, the Mishnah Achroinah, we learned that Tois was held that even the Mishnah Rishonah, who said that for drinking wine, you're not over until you drink a Rubius, the Mishnah Rishonah agrees that for Oichel, it's only a Kazayis. While the Mishnah Achroinah says even Shoisa is only with a Kazayis. The Mepharish, other Rishonim disagreed with Tois this and learned that the Mishnah Rishonah held everything, even Michael, was Berevius. Then we had the aloha of the multiple items that are included in the prohibition of Nazirish. You would get Malchus for each one. Then we had a shaila of whether or not you get Malchus on the single lav of Michala Shayyasa Megafna Yayin. If there's a lav which is like a lav Shabaklois, it's one umbrella lav. If you're over the lav, you get Malchus. No matter which violation you're over, you also get a secondary set of malchus for the Luchal Shayasa. And then the Gemara had the most fascinating story where a papa challenged Abaye by quoting a brisa that said, like a chamesh. And the Gemara says at the end, it doesn't really say chamesh in the brisa. He just made it up to see if Abaye was really sure of himself, which reminded me of the. Rosh Hashiva, they decided he wants to say Shir on Purim. The boys are looking at him like, on Purim, no Rosh Hashiva says Shir on Purim. What do you think this is? Rosh Hashiva is Mordechai Tzadik. And the Rosh Hashiva gave a Shir. And they were expecting him to say a Shir, so it'll be, you know, lighter in Yonim, Muli, the Agadita. In the meantime, he said, a Tifa Shir, a Bum Shir, the guy's heads were spinning. He had a major steer in Rambam's. And because of the steer in the Rambam, he had to build such a finish that it was so complicated that it impacted so many details of the studio. By the time he shows over, these guys, their head was spinning. And they're looking at the Rishiva like Mother. She says, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's the 
Okay, Gvaltik. So there's really no such brisa that says Chomesh. Uh, Rapaba made it up to see if Abaya was really sure of himself. And then we had the last little stickle of there's a there, there are those who are Matargum Mechartan and Vadzag to Mifortzonim Vadu Tzurin, which where a Tzurin we know clearly means the outer layer. For Tanim are the inner layer. That's consistent with Rabbi Yosef, who learned that Chartanim are the seeds and Zag is the peel. Which now takes us to a very new sugya that's going to also be fascinating. Okay, I have to ask, okay, Dubi would be able to answer this question. Um, your hair grows, right? You, it, it, you know the famous story? What? No, there you go, I'll take it off. <laughs> Dubi has more experience. <laughs> So um, these, there's a famous story with a Rosh Hashiva who uh, was traveling a different city to raise money. And he took one of his younger Talmudim with him. And this was the other Rosh Hashiva. Musel, they were going late at night and it was already after 11 and they pull up to a house. And the Rosh said, go knock on the door. And then the Bala Bosa answers, you'll call me. So the Bosa says, I'm a little bit uncomfortable knocking on the door. It's like 11 o'clock at night. Nay, nay, all the Shabbat, knock, knock, to good, to good. So he's like, but Rebbe, it's like too late. The lights are off. Like, uh, I don't hear any noise inside. Nay, 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 no, knock, knock. So what, what's the book is supposed to do? He knocks on the door and no one answers. Knock, knock, hamo, no, hamo. So he knocks again, he knocks again. Finally, the guy answers the door and says, are you out of your mind? The guy answers the door in his bathroom. Are you out of your mind? It's after 11, you're banging, you're banging. What's the matter with you? So the shoe says, shayt the chaba chazop, Mr. Klappen. So this Rosh Hashiva, the next day, the next day, he gave a shear for his alumni and for other Balabatim. And uh, the Balabatim in the city showed up. They wanted to hear the new Rashiva. And the Bacha sitting there. And this Rashiva, he was supposed to speak from 8 to 9. And it's already 9.30 and he's going strong. There's, no, there's not even a landing strip in, in sight. In the guy, in the guy. Anyway, this Bacha packed out, you know, after the shear. And he comes back to get the Rashiva. And she says, where did you go? He said, Rashiva, I had an emergency. He said, I, in Mamela, anybody else could leave, but you're my Talmud. Like, how could you walk out? How could you walk out on me like that? It doesn't matter. I had an emergency. I had an emergency. So, what was the emergency? He says, I, I, I had an emergency. I had to get a haircut. He's like, haircut is an emergency? You could have taken the haircut before the shear. He says, Rosh Hashiva, before the shear, I didn't need a haircut. So, so we're going to learn about haircuts. Um, when your hair grows, literally, when your hair grows, what happens to the hair? Does the actual follicle get extended, or there's more hair, it's like, it's like a tape dispenser. As the gr hair grows, you pull more out of the roll, there's more coming out through your scalp. So that's how it is, prove it. Oh, oh, gewaltig. So Monty says if someone dyes their hair and he doesn't dye it for a while, you see that the first half an inch is gray, and then it's, and then later on it's black, why? Because the new hair that came out, it's like a pencil that you remember you could take, change the lead, you took the tip off the top and put it on the bottom, or when you clicked it, it's more lead coming out. So the stuff that's coming out comes out without. How would you know that? <laughs> okay, come out. <laughs> so, so, so this this shot will become very relevant in just a minute. Okay, Zok the Heliga Mishnah. Stam Nazirois is Lama Join. Stam Nazirois is Lama Join. We've learned that before. We've actually had these very exact words before. It says, Obviously, the reason why the Tana is repeating it here is because the Tana wants to build upon this information. Since Stam Nazir says, and in order to be Mekayim, a proper Gilu, and when you discharge your Nazir, you need growth. Therefore, if if your hair was cut off, not by you, you weren't purposely soicer, you were forced. Soicer la majoy, mit soicer la majoy. Why? Because you need that growth. Now, what consists, what's a violation, what's called cutting? Bain bezug, whether it's with a scissor, bain bizar, whether it's with a razor, or even I should sif sif koshahu. I believe sif sif means like the Mephashish sif. Tolash ksas b'roshes hair. You even ripped them off. Chayiv it's chayiv. Now, shetolash ksas b'roshes hair. 
what does Rashi tell us? She pulled out. What did the Rashi say? Does the arch girl say? Does it mean he pulled it off, and ripped it off from inside his scalp, or it means by yanking it, it tore the hair in half? Does the arch girl define that? I thank you so much. Sif Seif is, is the end of the Mishnah. So does the arch girl translate that word and explain how much of the hair he pulled? He put that as hair. Okay, the Gemara is going to get into that in the detail. The Gemara clears the side. Hi, Benisa. When your hair grows, Milatachas Rabbi, does it grow from the bottom? So does it grow from the root? Like Mati said it does. And Mati proved it because whenever Dovi grows his hair long, you could see it's white at the first little bit. <laughs> I'm really ill. Or do you say the end of the hair grows? <laughs> There's three people who have been so you, Josh, and Tom. <laughs> Those are a mystery. Huh? Who cares? What's the nafkamina where your hair grows from? Okay, Zakta Gemara, very simple, very relevant. Le Nazir shall list him. A Nazir who the listim cut his hair off, but not completely. They left a little bit to be considered still that there's hair there. The shy ruboy could a lock of If a hair follicle is enough that you could bend it over and it will touch, it'll touch its root, which incidentally is also the shear of the two black cyrus that would pass a la paraduma. And it's also the shear of, of, of Cyrus for, for, some, for, for a nega. If, when you have a nega, there has to be the Seir Shachar Tomach boy. What's called enough of a growth if it's long enough that hair follicle that you could actually fold it over? Yeah, could be, yeah, yeah. If it grows because more is rolled out from the hair roll that's inside his head, then that means whatever they cut they cut um, my hair that was on my head the shas I was and the hair that's now on my head is not the hair of my naziris it's new hair so therefore we'll say that I have to uh, start again I need my 30 days if you're going to learn when my hair grows it's just the end of the hair grows out but the hair that's up against my scalp is that same original hair that was always there, then my da'akti shakoyim, the, the hair that I was maktish when I was makabal naziris, that hair is still here, so we, we won't say that my naziris got ruined. That's the nafkamina. The hair that's closest to your scalp, is that the original hair or is that new hair? Because as your hair grows, the hair against your scalp moves out and it's replaced behind it with new hair that comes out through your follicle. I'm sorry. Well, the question is the original hair is there. If the original hair moves out, and that's the, then that would be the part that was cut. If the original hair is always there against the scalp, there's always something left. Well, the question is that, that hair was that hair the hair of Naziris, or is that hair new hair? If you hold if you hold it, it, it comes out. Because when he cut it, I end up masking because the Gemara is going to discuss this that we have to count 30 days of a guy cut your hair. At what point did he cut it? Right? Okay. Toshma. So the Gemara now is looking to bring a raya as to how your hair grows. And Moti brought a raya from somebody who dyes his hair. Right? Okay. It's a galtic raya. Let's see what the Gemara says. When, 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 when the person is, it makes so from the Gemara, you see it's the existing hair, and we could even look. We could even look in 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 the toishes. So let's let's see. The e amrit milatachas rabbi nizirusa hashakle kloimar kloimar. So let's let's go back. V'shayu boy k'de loch of roishalit right. The whole sar v'sar each hair he left that length. But amu right. Uv'sam echaminon. 
Shaboy, let, let me see the Yud, because the, the hero is rare. Sheer Lagadel Hasar Bezayin Yamim. That's how long it would take. That length that you could bend it over, it takes seven days to grow that long. We're going to soon see that hair, a, gr- a growth of hair seven days is, a, is an amount that would be good for cutting. A different rate of speed. Okay, here. The Amit Milatakas Rabbi Nizru say, Ashok le Kleimer has Seir Shehiktish. The Yom Nizroi, the hair that he was Makdish the day he became a Nezer, Zen not le the Gilchai. He ended up cutting it off. The Zesha Sharubai, Kade Lokov, and this that was left over hair long enough to bend over and grow from seven days, Ain Zem Isar Shahoyaloi Mishas Kabbalas Nizroi. This was never around at the Kabbalas Nizroi. El Tzamach by Acher came. This is new hair that grew, and therefore v'soyser. This cutting would be soyser the naziris acharei shalei nishtayer be'oisei sar shahoya be'kabbalas nizrei. Because the hair that was there when he was makabel naziris is there is not there anymore. So the Gemara brings rayas from mitzias, like Mati brought a raya from mitzias. So let's see the different mitzias that the Gemara starts to bring a raya from. So zok to Gemara. Tashma, meha inva from lice. When people have nits in their hair, where is the nit? Is the nit at the edge of the hair or is the nit right up against the scalp? Did you ever notice what, what that is? It's by the scalp. When there's nits, it's by the scalp. I, as the hair grows, how come the nit that, that, that adhere to the, to, the, to the hair follicle, why doesn't it move out as the hair grows? Right? No, nits are still in their eggs. They're not hatching. So Tashma, meha inva chaya, the koyim. Normally, you always find it at the root of the hair. Rabbi, if you hold it the way the hair grows and it keeps on moving more hair out of the head, then Bereshit of Vinsabayla make him. It should be found at the edge of the hair as the hair grows. So that's not a raya. Let's say it grows to the bottom. So how come it doesn't move out? Because the Agav Chayusa Nachas was limpet. Because it's alive, it moves down as the hair grows. It moves close to the scalp. Like Mother says, it's grabbing onto the scalp. So the hair moves. Basically, it's like it's like it's like when you when you get onto the doctor's table and they forgot to change the paper. So you lift up his on the legs and he pulls more paper underneath you. The same thing that he holds on and they pull the paper. Tashma, I'll bring you a different raya. In Vamesa, whenever you find dead lice in one's hair, Bereshit de Vinsa. It's always out there. It's not at the root. So if you held that it just grows from the top, it doesn't grow more out of the scalp, well, then the dead should stay where they are. How come they don't remain on his scalp? Since it's dead, it doesn't have any way to hold on to anything. So as the hair, as the hair grows, even though it's growing from the Top, it just it falls out. It loosens the movement. It loosens and it falls towards the outside of the hair. You know, similar to dandruff. Dandruff falls out. It doesn't stay on your scalp the whole time. That's what, that's also discussed. Alt kim to it Toshma mi beluris the goyim from the chupis of the goyim. The chupis from the goyim. Toysus tells us what they used to do is they used to shave their head around. And at the top, like a carrot head, they would leave it grow so long that they would actually braid it. You might want to call those dreaded locks or dreadlocks. So they would braid their hair, and then at the bottom they would put a ponytail holder so that their that their that their uh, dreadlocks shouldn't loosen up. The boss of the magadlin law, but if they leave it and it grows for a while, rafi malatachas, the part closest to their scalp becomes unbraided. So isn't that a raya that it must grow from there? And since that wasn't, since it's new hair, it wasn't braided. That's why it's not braided. So it's also not a raya. Hasanami, I did come to he mishivcha the rafi. When he sleeps, he's always rubbing his hair on the mattress under him as he rubs his hair. So that could also loosen it up, even close to the scalp, even though it's growing from the other end, because it's it's from the rubbing of the. I guess he doesn't redo his hair. He doesn't wash his hair every day. Toshima. How about misakrata? What they used to do to identify animals is they used to put a paint on it. 
For instance, when you're counting Maishra Behema, number 10, you put a paint on it, a dye on it, in order to identify which animal it was. So the, the dye was like a thick type of paint, and it would cause the hair to clump up, because it's like gluing hair together. It's like if you have some glue in your hair. So the Rafi Amra Milatachas, what happens is, is if you identify a, a wool with like a red paint and, or to blue, whatever color paint it was, and it hardens up over there, if you wait a little while, that hardness is going to move out and there'll be new hair growing underneath it that won't be hard. So that's a raya, in fact, that it grows from the scalp. Usenoin, um, and it moves. Uh, the, the, those who, who, who uh, amend this. Or visu mati raya. Katavik sabi diknayon chivrin. When elderly people dye their white beards and the Rishonim speak out, even though it's not allowed, we're talking about those that uh, do it anyway, or those that need it for business, or those that don't really dye their hair, it just looks like they dye their hair. Then, uh, when they dye their hair, the first half an inch is always going to get white. If you don't re-dye, mamish mati zraya. The Gemara mamish had kavana to mati zraya. Okay, shmami no milatachas rabbi shmami no. Out of all the rays that the Gemara drained out of mati zraya was the raya that held the best. The raya is a guy dyes his hair, and then the, you see a lot of the scalp it's white. If you have a color raya, it's new hair being rolled out. Gavaltik. No, even from the laos was a lousy raya. The real raya was from the white hair that you see over there. Okay. By the way, it's the same thing on people's sideburns, I noticed. But the people don't have the hair. What's that? The Rishon to speak about the one I think one of the Rishon speaks about the reason why didn't the more bring that right from, from right away at the beginning? There it is, because it wasn't common. People didn't die. Okay. Zog to more Vaiter. So Zog to more Tanya. We have a brisha that's going to be difficult to understand based on this shita. So this is like a like a scientific experiment. From the scientific experiment, the Gemara, the Gemara calculated that it must be that the hair grows out that way. And Nazar who the list grabbed him and forced him to shave his head. It says. In the Brisa, that that's not so. But the Esau Kadai Techmila Tachas Rabbi, based in our Shaila, Listar, because the hair that he was Makamal on his Naziris is no longer here, it was destroyed. And for the Gemara, you're 100% right. But we're not speaking by somebody who they cut his hair off during the course of his Naziris. We're speaking about someone who they cut his hair off on day 30. Day 30 is already. After he finished counting, he might not have brought carbonus yet. It's still day 30, and normally you wait till day 31 to bring the carbonus, but day 30 is technically the last day, and therefore, and therefore, he doesn't have to count over again. So if it was during the 30 Avada, it's going to be so sir. But here it, it, it was on day 30. Umani, who holds that if your hair is shaven off on day 30, that you don't have to count again. He holds it's only soicer seven days if it's achem alois. Like we like like I said on the Maral, that's why if there's a little bit of hair that can fold over, that's considered a growth of seven days. That's the minimum amount of growth you have to have in order to make the galuach if this occurred after the malois. My time of Rebeloza. Where did Rebeloza get it from? Rebeli Ezer. Where did Rebeli Ezer get it from? That a growth of seven days is enough to accomplish the giluach. So tomorrow, yalev tagalachas tahira mi tagalachas tum. We're going to learn tagalachas tahira from the tagalachas when someone becomes tame and then he's starting and he's mitahir himself. Then he restarts his naziris. He has to cut his hair after he's tame. After he's tame, how long was he tame before he cuts his hair? Seven days, because that's the period of time that it takes to get the zrika. Matagalachas Toma is Shiva, it's after seven days. Aftaglachas Tahira is going to be Shiva. The Kim Hula Rabbanon and the Rabbanon know that calls Zain Yoimin 
Osio mazio kde lochef roi shoyle ikrim. The Rabbanin knew that the amount of time that it takes for a hair to grow long enough, that it could be folded over to its to its root, that takes seven days. So therefore, if there was soisher in the middle, it, you would need you need a thirty day growth. If you have like the Rabbanon that even on day thirty is soisher, you'd also need a thirty day growth. But if it was after the Naziris, it just in order to be able to do the tagalachas of mitzvah, there it's only seven days. And in fact, Toysva speaks out that even the Rabbanon who hold, if it happened on day 30, you got to wait 30 days. But if it happened on day 31 or later, you would also um, only need seven days to wait. Zog to Gemara. Nazar Shagilach, a Nazar that shaved his head, Bain Bissar, it doesn't make a difference what equipment he used. Whether he used a razor, bein bezug, or if he used a scissor, or he just or he just yanked it out, kolshu even amashu chayiv, he'll be chayiv because of his nazirus. Tanur abonam, sar. So let's look at the pasuk that expresses the iser for one to be nizraleach. It says kol yemei nizray. Let me see if I can find it here. Kol yemei neder nizray, tar lo yavar al roishon. So the Pasuk describes the cutting of the hair using the tool called a tar. Then it says a more general term, It should be Kaddish. It doesn't say that it's only prohibited to cut it with a sar. It's Kaddish. Mashmah cannot be cut at all. So the, this is the Pasuk that the Gemara is going to darshan. So state the Gemara, Sar, Enli Lasar, Talash, Mirate, Sif Safe, Kol Shahuminai. So I'm going to touch what I think these are, and I would like if someone has an art scroll to tell me what the art scroll says. So Enli Lasar, if he used a, if he used a, uh, a razor, Talash, if he uprooted, Mirate, which Toisvis touches, is a machlek to show how all these things. Mirate means. The akroy legamre mimokim gedulay. You yanked it out. So talash means he pulled out the hair near the near the scalp, but there was some hair left. Mirate means you pulled it and it ripped it right out of the root. There was nothing left. And sif safe is kamoy suf. Um, I, I don't even know what what that means. I'm sorry. Trim. Okay. But the, the Mefarish has a different approach to what these things are. He says, he says, um, uh, let me see where he says, uh, a little bit further up. Only the Sar, the Afka Shalika, but Tolosh Bakosku, Pirish, he didn't use a razor. He ripped it out right near his head. So, what is the article? How does he touch? All of these words. Tarash means he plucked, removed, sif safe, picked. Okay, so he, he, he so the, the all, so like when you, I think, what I don't know when he says pick, pick mamish from the root or picked halfway because it seems like you pulled it off a hand. But it ripped the hair. It didn't pull it out from its root, or if it pulled out from root, and this is it's not clear. Oh, the article doesn't have a clear. So why didn't the guy from the article write? I don't have it clear. Since he doesn't have it clear, it's not clear. Manually plucking your hair out by its root. Okay. Okay. So Safsuf is pulling part of the hair. And and mirit is from the root, and what what does it mean talash and mirit? Talash. Okay, so then what's mirit? Because because talash is learning mirit, mirit is the clear. Okay, not by hand. Okay, kol shul minai. Tama doimer. Doesn't say that. Right, that's what's not clear. So that's what the article meant. It's not clear. Tama doimer kadosh yeh gadel peres aroishai, which is general. And that means that any way you remove the hair, that would violate the iser. Diver Rabbi Yoshia. Rabbi Yoshia holds there's a lot for any way you remove the hair. 
Because it says Sar Loyavai. What about Rabbi Yudin? Rabbi Yudin Shemer, no, Tar, only the Tar, but Mirei, Tala Shiv, Seif Kol, Shu Potter. It's not a mitzvah to do, but you're Potter. Frank, the Gemara, how can you say that? Well, Siv Kadeshia, which seems to mean any way you dispose of the hair, it's going to be a violation. That's Gemara, no, that's not what that's for. Remember them, Gilech Lei Besar, Koyim Alei, Ba'asev Eloi Sesev. What, what is the method of removal that violates the Zeris? Only with a sar, only with a razor. But if you do it that way, you're not only over the lav, you're also over the messe. So you're, you're bringing up a murder that can stickle because the, the, the Gemara, the Rishonim, the Achrenim, bring rice from here to Shabbos. You're not allowed to brush your hair or comb your hair with a brush unless it's the softest of bristles, right? Because otherwise it's psikresha. So the question is, anything that would constitute a psikresha would be ulcer. So I, I don't know, when you wash hair, is it a psikresha that hair is going to fall out? If it is, you wouldn't be able to wash your hair. I don't know if it is, but for sure combing your hair is a psikresha because it's impossible to comb your hair and no hair will come off. Um, a nozer cannot come as here. It's part of a nozer cannot come as here. That's right. But if you hold, well, they'll, they'll, no, because they'll, they'll for sure be an Israel say. Oh, no, he will, they won't, they might, according to Abiyoshi, there might not be any Israel at all if you use the different method. But otherwise, it will be also even to come as here. That's right. And if you look at all the interviews with nozer, it, it like looks like they not only didn't comb the hair, it looks like they didn't shower either. Right? So I, I, I I wish on the video somehow technology can convey a smell because watching watching that uh, interview with the fast and the nozer, the only dimension of my senses that wasn't complete was the smell of it. Uh, okay. Tanya, we learned. Tanya, you Sar. Ainli el sar. Talash, mire, tsif, seif, kol, shum, nain. Tamalomer, lo yavar el roishoy. So it says Loyavra So which means you're gonna to have to darshan it a little bit funny because it doesn't say Loyavra al Rosh. It's just Sar Loyavra al Rosh. So that you're gonna to have to darshan it Sar Loyavra al Rosh and Loyavra al Rosh at Malay Shem Yoshem. You have to darshan it a stickle both ways. So so Zok to Gemara, Zok to Gemara. Mayakesh say finu the rabbis called over or if anyway we're including every method of hair removal is included in the Isir. So why did the Torah throw in the word tsar? Just to throw us off? Just to confuse us? I'll tell you why. At the end of his Naziris, he has to cut his hair off, right? There, he must use a sar. But the Torah never tells us that he must use a sar. So, um, so, Maybe you learn from a Torah. The Mitzvah, by his final giluach, he needs sar, and and Toisus will tell us how we know that. But you couldn't learn from Mitzvah to Nazir. He absher. You know why? She ain't done in kal mechamer lahakmer lo. Mitzvah is considered more chamer than Nazir, and we'll see why. And therefore, just because you see by Mitzvah he needs to use a sar, who said by Nazir you would need to use a sar? Let's see Toysvis, what how do we know by Mitzayr? So Zok the Hedaka Toysis. Meach is Shay Finu Lurabis called Dabar Afilu Sharma Virin, even other hair removal methods. Matabilisar. Why would the Torah tell us Sar? Zok the Gomorrah, the Vishal of the Madnu, Taglacha Sakhrani Shi Basar, Ulamdi Mitzayr, Yavsher, Shane Lamdim Kal, Mechamer, Lachmer Love. Ulukamanya Finon, Mehekab Shita Lahitana. The taglach has mitzvah besar. How did the Tana know so 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 surely that by mitzvah you also need a sar? Well, like sivsar beferish doesn't say sar anywhere beferish by mitzvah. The answer is shein donin kal mechomer. Shem mitzvah chomer. A mitzvah is considered more chomer than nazir. Why? Sheton taglach has called sar gupay. The mitzvah has to cut off all of the hair of his whole body, not just of his head. The chsiv vayi biyam ashmini yigalach has called sar yis roishoy vesekanoi. This guy by saying all the goes on, the puzzle goes on that the, this entire body has to be shaved. Time of another show, Kal, she ain't it's her look a lay a color, Roshai. 
the Nazar only has to shave his head, and therefore, just because by Mitzayi you need Tsar, Lav Davke, you need Tsar by the uh, by the Nazar. The Kachos of Tsar Layavor, that's why it says by Naziris, Tsar Layavoy, even though it's not relevant to the Isser, the main in the Isser, Havora, Shabbosoyach Nazirusoy, Tsar is not relevant. To cutting his hair, but taking the rusai, because but taking the rusai is high regardless. That you becholam if you're unlucky, because no matter what you use, you get malchus according to Rabbi Yisrael. So therefore, tenayu leinin taglachas lemitzvus taglachas I shall save the rusai. Then you'll be sar. Use that sar to teach us the the type of cutting tool he needs to use when he takes off his hair finally. She ain't done in kal mechomer lahachmelo. Rabbi Yomer ain't it sar. Rebbe says, I don't need tsar, I don't need the word tsar in this pasuk to tell us that when you do the final giluach, that you need to use a tsar. You know why? Because Harei Oimer, tsar lo yavor al roishoi, and the pasuk continues, ad melois. So when you read the pasuk, the tsar lo yavor al roishoi is connected to the al melois. Ha toyro omra, achar melois, loise taglachas el besar. So you read the sar lo yavar al roish ad melois, referring to the end. When should you use the sar? You should use it at the end. So I don't need that to be extra. Frek the Gemara, how could you say that? Vaksiv sar lo yavar al roish. I don't understand. How could you say that? How could you say that that you you that sar is not extra? How could you say sar is not extra? And even without it being extra, you will know. That the chiv to cut the, the, the nazar's hair at the end is with a sar, even though sar is not extra, meaning that it's saying sar referring to it's saying sar referring to the iser. I we know you don't have to only cut with a sar to be over the iser, even if you cut with anything, you're over the iser. So, why is the word sar there according to Rebbe? According to Rebbe, if you hold sar is not extra and I'm using it to apply it to soif and zeros, so then it doesn't apply to chilas and zeros. And chilas lazirus, anything you can use, anything would be usher. But according to Rebbe, who you don't need it to be extra to teach you soif lazirus. Kum tachayis, you need sars relevant not only to soif lazirus. It's also relevant to someone taking a haircut during his lazirus. I we know it doesn't have to have to be a sar. So what's pshat? So if you lav or lav b'shnei lavin, if you use the sar, you get two malchus. If you stam as I cut it, there's one malchus. If you lose a sar, you get two malchus. Let's see the halacha rab. Halacha toisus. Rabbi Yemen Sarch, and you sarch sar la suye the taglachas achroid shall not. I don't need an extra word sar. The chinami sarch little fey, even if you need sar to teach us something regarding the middle of the Naziris, the issue of cutting hair, middle of Naziris, I feel ochi, nevertheless, Yadina Mamela the taglachas achroid of the sar. From the Poshit Pshat of the Poshuk, I know that the last taglachas has to be with the sar. Ubaha Polak Atanakama. A Tanakama today. This in this prat, Rebbe is arguing with his Tanakama. The Tanakama, I see the sar mishum taglachas achroina. According to the Tanakama, the whole purpose of the word sar is only for the taglachas achroina. According to Rebbe, sar could be easily referring to the taglachas in its place, but it's also referring to the taglachas achroina. Uparich, if that's the case, vaksiv sar leyavar the mash mishar mavir nami. We learned that any type of any type of way that you remove your hair during the zeros is a violation of the zeros. How could Rebbe say you need it for itself? Meaning the mashma the besar dafka mechayiv. It's mashma you're only mechuyid for violating the zeros if you use a sar. The svirah the Gemara the in lano loymar the Rebbe used for kabyonisim. The Gemara doesn't want to accept to say that Rebbe holds like kabyonisim the loy aser shar mavirin. Kabyonisim said that other mavirin are not aser. It was it was Rabbi Yosha who said all mavirin are aser. The Bionian said only the sar is us. Only, only cutting your hair with a sar is a violation of the zeros. The Gemara doesn't want to say that Rebbe holds like a Bionian. The Mitika Amar ain't a sarach, mashmad lay also the fluge, al tanakama today, the mechaiv al komavir. It's not mashmad that Rebbe's arguing la halacha on the assumption of the tanakama. He's just saying, I don't need an extra. So, oi bezoi, if he's going to hold that you get malchus for al mavirin, so what is the tsar? What impact does the sar have on the halach of cutting hair during the nasiris? Umishani lavar lo beveis lavin. The kach kos of sar 
You make a leich besar over bishnei lavin. Sai mishum sar and mishum avirin. The lav koy asar. The lav is going on the word sar. So it says in the pasuk. It says in the pasuk. Call you may nizrei sar lo yavor. Right. So there's a lav there telling you if you use a sar. The koinami ashar mavirin. But the lav is also going on other ways of removal. So it's like a double lav. Vavik iluk siv. It, it's as if it said sar lo yavor. So let's let's see the gimel. So let's see the gimel. How he explains how you would read it that sar goes both ways. Kiluk siv sar lo yavor. The oisoy lo shadi the 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 sar lo the sar lo yavor. It says the sar lo yavor al So you, you you don't only say that lo yavor is referring to the word sar mentioned before the loyavor rather it's also referring to loyavor al roshoy as a standalone independent lav that's not connected to the tool that's used the half the hash to now is rabbi therefore you can learn a general lav to anyone cutting to another cutting there anyway and a specific lav to someone cu- cutting this air with a sar the lenich of sar elalitaglachas mitzvah if sar was only written for the taglachas mitzvah not to shed any light on on framing when it's ushered, the house ushered to cut your hair. Could you come to the camel? You come off him, lift the veil of Sar, but fairish, Gabi Teglach Mitzvah. If the whole prism of Sar is only to tell you how you have to cut your hair at the end, well, then that's where the Torah should have put it. Why is the Torah misplacing the word Sar when we're discussing the Surim of Nazar if all the Torah wants to tell us is how to cut your hair at the end? The Mahil of the Kosway, Gabi Yisura. It must be Loyal Lachshelo Kishtayim to tell you that if you use the Sar, they cut your hair while you're a nazir, you get two malkis. But but if you're going to tell me that's the only reason why it's there, and therefore you can't bring me a raya that at the end you have to cut your hair with a sar, then the kula lahayudasa amai samach al admonois al sar layavar. Why did it put the word almonois on the sar layavar? It should have separated them. Alaratzaloymar admonois layavar sar until the malois you shouldn't use a sar. Hola achim malois. But you can move dike, but once your nazir is, is counted and completed, then Loyavir Sairo Shayal Basar, there you should only use a sar. So from the placement and the structure of the Pasuk, Zok Rebbe, it shows us that Sar is teaching us Aloha about how you have to cut your hair to be over, and you'd be over to Surim if you cut your hair with a sar, but it's also there to teach us at the end of your nazir, when you're discharging it, what kale you need to use to cut your hair. Okay, we'll stop here, and we will continue tomorrow. Thank you.